Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 11th annual Cleveland Current Banya. Thank you for joining us today for this special talk about AP tourism, the intersection of bees and honey and tourism and travel. As we all start to think about our summer vacation plans, you may be thinking about where you may like to go in Slovenia this year. And our speaker today is an expert in this field and is here to tell us all about um, AP tourism and how you can discover Slovenia's side of uh, culture and travel in this field. I'd like to take a moment to thank our numerous partners and sponsors this year. We are so grateful for your support and for bringing programming like this to um, a community uh, that we all know and love. I'd also like to invite you to um, go ahead and type in your questions, comments into the Facebook and YouTube comments section. And as we go through this program, we will be sure to take those comments and questions and then ask our speaker in the Q&A section um, after her presentation. Without further ado, I want to invite you to um, sit back and relax and enjoy our presentation today. And we'll meet you back at the end for a live Q&A with the presenter. Thank you. Good evening, dear Kurentovania friends, dear visitors, uh, nature lovers and beekeepers. Believe me, as a Slovenian representative, I can confirm that Slovenia is a proud nation of beekeepers with heart and soul. With nearly one keeper per 200 inhabitants, Slovenia ranks at the very top of the EU member states. Beekeeping in Slovenia has simply become a part of the society. So no wonder that Slovenia became a pioneer in many fields as to the bees and beekeeping, an initiator of the World Bee Day in order to raise awareness of the essential role of bees and of course other pollinators in keeping people and the planet healthy, to preserve our ecosystems and environment, to enable sustainable development, solve problems related to the global food supply, eliminate hunger in developing countries. Slovenia also launched traditional honey breakfast, now transformed into Day of the Slovenian Food in schools, in order to educate students about the healthy breakfast and the meaning of the locally produced fresh food. Last spring, Slovenia joined the EU campaign of planting bee-friendly plants in order to reach the EU goal of planting 3 billion trees by 2030 to contribute to the Europe's climate neutrality, as well as to provide bees enough food for the future. We are proud to inform that all those three projects have been successfully implemented for already fourth year also in Ohio. And that we have with those projects, together with the American partners and beekeepers, reached more than 1,200 students of the Greater Cleveland Elementary, Middle and High Schools. Slovenian beekeeping is um, special in many other respects. As a homeland of the Carniolan honeybee, which became Slovenian national symbol, its own unique apiary at bee houses, special AZ hives, unique decorative beehive panels, which represents our cultural heritage, and has developed many various honey products in culinary, in art, as well as happy tourism, happy well-being, and happy therapy. One cannot find this future anywhere else in the world. Happy tourism represents an innovative combination of tourism and beekeeping and gives the opportunity to explore Slovenians' nature, culture, traditions, exceptional cuisine, and of course, 
warm-hearted people. We say that happy tourism is a mixture of beekeeping, green economy, and sustainable tourism. In Slovenia, there are currently 45 certified providers of happy tourism services. Among them, Ari Tours, whose director, Mrs. Ari Korosic, today main speaker, is a driving force of Slovenian happy tourism locally and globally. Ari Tours is with their happy roots brand which was developed in cooperation with the Beekeeping Association of Slovenia, a specialized provider of beekeeping tourist routes in Slovenia for both domestic and foreign tourists. I'm sure you will enjoy the representation of Mrs. Koroshets and hope to see you at one of the happy routes in Slovenia. Good luck. Hello everyone and welcome to session about apitourism. My name is Tanya Arih Koroshets. I'm coming from Slovenia. I run the business, family business, Aritours Apiroots Travel, and I'm also coordinator of Apimondia Working Group for Apitourism. Today I would like to tell you a beautiful story about honeybees, about Karnika bee in Slovenia, and of course about Happy tourism and happy well-being. But firstly, let's see what tourism trends have to say about tourism at the moment. Trends in tourism are changing fast, especially after Corona. We notice these uh, changes are uh, dramatically changed. Uh, all those all-inclusive packages we were used to lying on the beach for seven, ten days in uh, Turkey or Egypt uh, or some cruising, uh, cruising sailings, uh, that changed. People are demanding something else. People are demanding experience, authentic experience. They're demanding to meet locals. So when they travel, not just being in the hotel or on the very beautiful beach and uh, taking a swim in a beautiful Turkey sea. No, they want to meet people, eat local food. Uh, they want to, uh, to experience the nature. Uh, they're wanting to have nature uh, products. Uh, they would like to be active. Uh, they would like to see unspoiled nature of the country they're visiting. And uh, by traveling, they also want to feel important, to be part of this journey. So they want to be like an actor uh, in the movie. They want to learn. They want to be creative in these experiences. Uh, and when we're traveling, what is the most important thing? One of the most important thing, if you ask anybody, they will say, it's about food and drink. And this is also unique to each country. Each country is proud of their identity, of their food and their people. And by Corona times, uh, there is uh, increasingly uh, raising the importance of health, having awareness uh, how important it is to be healthy. So when we're traveling, we are searching for a healthy destination. We are searching for a well-being product, product and uh, by that, by that travels and all those trends that we just mentioned, all those experiences are transforming, uh, are transforming us. And Slovenia is a very small country set in the heart of Europe. It's very green. We have a lot of fresh waters, natural springs. Almost 60% is covered with forest. We have Pannonian Plain, we have Alps, we have Mediterranean Sea, we have Karst. Some people called it like paradise. And yes, it is. But there is another thing that is special to Slovenia. This is something that is making us unique and uh, giving us opportunity to become number one on the world level. And this is beekeeping. Slovenian honey bee called Karnika. It's authentic bee. It's protected bee. And Slovenia is beekeeping nation. 
If we say there are only 2 million inhabitants in Slovenia, you can imagine 10,000 people in 2 million is a great number. And this is a number of uh, our beekeepers. In almost every corner of Slovenia, there is a beekeeper. There is a saying in Slovenia that at least there is at least somebody in your family or a neighbor or a relative or somebody you just know that is a beekeeper. And that's true. And here, become, here comes apiturism. Apiturism is a fusion of green destination, apiculture and travel. Let me tell you a story about apiturism. Beekeeping in Slovenia is something that is with us for very long, long time. So it has a long tradition. In Slovenia, we have authentic honey bee called Karnika bee. It's protected bee and it's allowed to be breeded and to have uh, the bees uh, only this species in Slovenia. We had some of great important players, teachers, uh, beekeepers in the past. One of them is Anton Jansha. The World Bee Day that we are celebrating 20th of May is named just after him. There is also another important person is Filip Terch, doctor uh, from Czech originally, but he used to work um, and lived in Slovenia. He is a father, he's a father of modern epitherapy. Uh, so, uh, as we said that bee bees are part of us for very long, there was a love between beekeeper and their bees. And in the past, they started to build houses for their bees. Not only the houses, but it was important they were beautiful, beautifully painted beehives. Now we are having more than 10,000 or 15,000 of different kind of bee houses all around Slovenia and mostly all of them are very nicely decorated. Front panels are painted with uh, some old-fashioned or uh, uh, religious motifs. And at that time, there came an idea. In 2003, Slovenia hosts one of the, the greatest events. This is Apimundia, the world's biggest uh, beekeeping event that takes place uh, every uh, second year uh, in uh, another part of uh, the globe. And at that time, they found out uh, that that would be very interesting if our beekeepers would open their homes to visitors that they can see and visit their apiaries, so the bee houses. And uh, some few years after that symposium or the Congress, uh, they came uh, to us, to our company. We were partnering at that time. We were organizing um, beekeeping uh, excursions already and came up with the idea. What if we can combine tourism and uh, apiculture? And we said, of course, nothing, uh, this can be very difficult. Uh, we are sure that something, some kind of beekeeping tourism already exists. So we started from point zero. As we find out, there is nothing about the beekeeping or apiturism um, being seen or found uh, anywhere else in the world. Some of our neighbors uh, had uh, bee houses in uh, Italy and already welcoming um, some tourist groups, but this was it. It was not organized uh, in the way that we are having the network of apitourism providers uh, in Slovenia at the moment. So in 2007, we start partnering with Slovenian Beekeeping Association. We started to run educational programs for our beekeepers. Our beekeepers were mainly uh, farmers, so they were not in the business. Uh, they didn't know anything about tourism offers. They didn't know how to welcome uh, the group of visitors or beekeepers, uh, what to offer them, what to tell them, how to be dressed, how to communicate, what to show, uh, how to make the experience uh, when visitors come uh, to their bee houses. So we knew it's important to educate our beekeepers how to do it, how to run um, beekeeping business, uh, beekeeping tourism business. 
After that, we um, in short time, we knew that we have to make certification system. So it means kind of guarantee service when you visit the beekeeper. If uh, they are having the certificate, uh, certificate, uh, certificate of excellence, it means there uh, somebody is paying attention what kind of offer they have, what uh, materials uh, they use when uh, they welcome the group, how they welcome the group, uh, what kind of experience and products uh, they are offering. Shortly after that, when we introduce uh, up our apitourism offer on the world level, uh, we were named to run um, the group at Apimondia organization. So this is the biggest uh, uh, organization uh, for beekeepers uh, on the world level. And from that time, uh, we are in charge of um, connecting and making the network of apitourism uh, providers uh, around the globe. Uh, at the beginning, uh, we thought that um, those kind of experience uh, when the groups or individuals would, uh, will visit uh, our beekeepers would be very much uh, at interest uh, between uh, beekeepers from other countries. But as we are running um, a travel company, we uh, shortly uh, find out that this kind of offer is more and more interesting for people that are not really familiar with honeybees. Some of them, they didn't even know what, uh, what is the difference uh, between uh, Slovenian honey or some other honeys and that uh, Slovenian honey is uh, very welcome, uh, is very calm uh, honeybee, that uh, they don't need to wear protective suits uh, when they come and visit uh, the bee houses. So after organizing some professional beekeeping excursions, uh, we found out that, that in Slovenia we can run uh, any kind of excursions just for ordinary people or uh, for uh, business groups um, that want to have some uh, different experiences. So uh, we call this inspired travels uh, while, because we think that uh, all of uh, the honeybees are, can be very inspiring uh, for us when you see and learn from them how to live, how to work, uh, and how to communicate and work in community uh, like a uh, uh, honey colony. So now the, we are running beekeeping tours uh, all around the globe, uh, all around the world. We are trying to establish uh, establish the network of happy tourism providers in each country, so of course, with limits and some advantages of each country. But the main focus is to put the bee uh, and its experience uh, in the center of all the travels. Uh, in meantime, we find out when uh, our um, beekeepers uh, have uh, built those um, bee houses or apiaries for their bees, they find out uh, that it's uh, very beneficial to stay in the bee house. You can imagine when being in the bee house full of uh, beehives uh, that are uh, full with propolis, uh, honey, that it smells very beautiful, very nice. And not just that it's being nice, it's very beneficial uh, and very relaxing staying and that they even find out uh, uh, that it has medical benefits uh, staying in the bee house. So they start to build epitherapy or epi well-being uh, bee houses that are now giving opportunity for visitors um, uh, to have some treatment sessions or just uh, having uh, experience when you lie on the hives or having honey massage uh, in uh, the bee houses. Uh, from last year, we start, uh, I mean, uh, Slovenian beekeeping uh, organization uh, started with um, establishing international certification system. Why is this important? It is important that we have standards that uh, are common uh, in each country and uh, not just uh, having it in Slovenia. It was not an easy job to develop this kind of new novel um, tourism field called api tourism. It was very, very important to have important players uh, that uh, supported us with the idea. So, of course, the idea behind Slovenian Beekeeping Association 
Slovenian Beekeeping Association is uh, known as being one of the most um, uh, one of the best organization uh, in the beekeeping uh, field on the world level. Uh, they uh, introduced a lot of um, projects that are not important only for Slovenia, but again on the world level. So one of that is uh, having traditional Slovenian breakfast. The idea came from uh, Slovenian beekeepers. Uh, it, the, the idea uh, behind that is that uh, in each house, in each uh, uh, school, primary school, uh, uh, we should eat at least one day uh, Slovenian honey. And now we are not uh, eating only Slovenian honey, but we are having all Slovenian uh, products uh, together with uh, uh, bread uh, and uh, the fruit uh, and, of course, uh, Slovenian honey. So this happens uh, every third week, uh, uh, every third Friday in uh, November each year in every school in Slovenia but not only in Slovenia is going behind um, uh, the borders uh, already. So uh, the next uh, important and I think the most important project uh, project was uh, to to have World B Day that we are ce celebrating for last few years. We even have World Happy Therapy Day that we already mentioned, named after Dr. Philip Terch. We have Slovenian honey that is uh, protected uh, and a lot of other uh, important projects. The, the, the other important player uh, was also Apimondia. So Apimondia is World Beekeeping Association connecting uh, uh, all important players in beekeeping, uh, especially in um, scientific um, uh, way. Uh, and uh, they acknowledged and uh, approved uh, apiturism as being very important part of uh, beekeeping that can help to uh, to increase um, beekeeping uh, around uh, the world. In Slovenia, there is also Ministry for Agriculture and Environment that also uh, played and is still playing important uh, role in promoting uh, apiturism as one of the very uh, promising uh, economic uh, activity uh, on that level. Slovenian Tourism uh, Board uh, also included apiturism as one of the most important uh, um, uh, tourism products uh, in Slovenia, just uh, next to uh, cycling uh, cities, uh, museum, museums and other cultural experience. Um, uh, Slovenian Bees has uh, its own place there. You can see the brochure that was launched uh, by Slovenian Tourism Board uh, and it's called My, uh, My Way of Following the Bees. You can uh, find it on their website and also some other uh, Slovenian tourist sites. Uh, and also I think a uh, very important role in promoting uh, beekeeping and api tourism uh, uh, are having also municipalities. Um, this is also one of the projects run by Slovenian uh, Beekeeping Association. Each year uh, they are giving award to uh, friendly to beekeeping um, uh, municipality and uh, each year there are more and more of them competing how they uh, uh, are, are welcoming bees in their uh, city center. When we introduced the model of API tourism, uh, we also set the map of API experience in Slovenia. Here you can see the map of Slovenia with all neighboring countries. Uh, so you can see uh, Austria uh, on the north and uh, uh, Croatia and uh, Croatia on the east and south and uh, northeast. You can see Hungary uh, and on the west Italy. But uh, here is the map uh, where you cannot see only Ljubljana and Bled uh, that are mostly known places when you think about uh, Slovenia. But here is uh, importance and focus to experience uh, in um, so happy tourism in Slovenia. You can see that there are uh, mainly all around Slovenia 
some of the beekeepers, museums where you can uh, visit our beekeepers having apitherapy treatments or having the tasting of honey products, uh, especially honey, sparkling meat, for instance, uh, where you can make some workshops with um, a honey dough or just experience uh, 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 some uh, honey queen breeding uh, stations. As we already explained, it is very important for all the uh, all beekeepers or non beekeepers that uh, want to uh, have beekeeping business in the field of apitourism is important. They are included the certification system that is run and judged by uh, Slovenian Beekeeping Association. So, uh, at the moment, uh, there are certification. Uh, there is a certific certificate with uh, three bees. Uh, this is the top rated uh, experience, but uh, in the next uh, few years we are expecting um, uh, some novelties in this uh, system. As our, I already explained, it will be international system and probably ranking with one to five bees as being the top rated uh, experience. And so, now we are here when we can explain and to show, at least show uh, what apitourism is about. So apitourism is experience of Slovenia. The idea was, of course, uh, uh, originally in Slovenia. So I will explain what we, you can uh, uh, see and feel when you come to Slovenia and meet our beekeepers. When you travel to Slovenia, it, of course, it's important to see all must see in Slovenia, like we already mentioned, Lake Bled with this beautiful island, uh, or Ljubljana, the green capital of Slovenia, or going to the seaside and visit uh, medieval uh, Piran, or going to Jerusalem hills where you, uh, when you are walking through uh, uh, the wine yards, and of course at the end also taste some of delicious. Uh, Slovenian wine. But by that, it's also important that you can, uh, you can visit some of our apitourism providers. These are different type of apitourism providers. Some of them are, uh, are providing experience to get uh, insight to honey, uh, how honey is being produced, uh, to learn about uh, queen breeding uh, or uh, to search for a queen bee. Uh, the other one are more oriented to giving to give some workshops on beehive front panel paintings or to make some um, uh, Slovenian um, hearts from honeydew. Or you can uh, even uh, try to uh, to make some honey liquid uh, with the beekeepers. Or the other thing that is very um, interesting uh, and very popular is to enter the bee house and having some uh, api therapy or api well-being uh, experience. And as we already said uh, at the beginning, it's about being creating, being creative and to learn. So when you come to our beekeeper, as you can see on this picture, you can come close to the bees and ask our beekeeper to explain you all about the bees, how the honey is being produced or how, uh, where is um, uh, um, uh, the royal jelly, how they produce royal jelly, where is propolis, how the bees are living in the bee houses and, uh, and how they build their bee cells. So it's very interesting to be part of the story, not just to observe behind uh, uh, one uh, panel or just uh, uh, just watching from back, but you can really get close and this is very authentic experience and uh, very good rated uh, with visitors that visited our uh, beekeepers. Of course, some of the, the visits uh, uh, with uh, the beekeepers are more professional and are oriented toward uh, professional explanation and trainings. So you have all, uh, all of course, uh, some of the beekeepers that can uh, have hands-on experience uh, if they have already some knowledge about beekeeping or they're just uh, new to the beekeeping and have an entry level of uh, trainings 
how to do the beekeeping, uh, the way of beekeeping in Slovenia, some specialties like we have AZ beekeeping. This is special, uh, unique system that uh, beekeepers knew, know, uh, that beekeepers know um, that Slovenian way of beekeeping is different from all other systems that, that you are working from behind. It is very convenient for uh, people uh, with special needs uh, that are maybe having some uh, uh, mobility problems. So this way of uh, beekeeping is also uh, very popular with dead people as uh, they can work uh, on uh, their own with uh, the bees. And there are also API well-being programs. These are programs uh, inside of uh, the bee houses, API areas where uh, beekeepers are offering di different kind of experiences, well-being programs or even uh, apitherapy treatments with uh, some uh, direct uh, inhalations uh, of uh, mm, uh, honey air coming from the apiary from the hive or uh, just lying on the hives having uh, honey massage in the beehive just sleeping over uh, in uh, one of uh, those uh, and when you visit one of those our apitourism providers you will be also welcome with uh, some honey liquid or some specialties for instance you can see here uh, some different types of honey some mixtures with honey with nuts or chocolate or with uh, some tinctures or also you can see here um, goat cheese with chestnut honey sounds delicious mm, it's very interesting or maybe you would like to try honey sparkling meat this is also something that is unique and different. Uh, uh, so when you're traveling, it's important, as we said, that you try also some of delicious products. As you can see, by that kind of travel, we are respecting nature. And this is one of the most important uh, factors with apitourism. It's sustainable, it's eco, and it's friendly to nature and all the human and other beings uh, and on the world. So apitourism really provides a sustainable opportunity um, in tourism trends. Uh, and it's one of those uh, products that, uh, that, that is very, in demand is very increasing and more and more people would like to try and experience what honeybees are trying to tell us, uh, what they are offering to us uh, with uh, their products. So on the up tour, you just have to activate all the senses and the rest comes on its own. If we consume the impacts of happy tourism and uh, happy well-being, so it's very important raising awareness of the importance of, be of bees for humanity. If there are no bees, there is no life. There is importance of healthy, locally produced food. This is connection with providers, organic farming. This is something that we are doing in Slovenia. So we really try to promote that Slovenian beekeepers um, uh, are working closely with other farmers and uh, that they are exchanging their prod uh, products, are promoting together. And so uh, these food chains are very um, short and uh, we can offer only the best uh, to our uh, visitors. Um, with Apitourism, uh, we are also uh, raising awareness of positive ep uh, effects uh, that bees and their products have on the humans. Uh, I'm talking ab about physical and physical well-being. So if you consume, uh, for, uh, for instance, uh, honey or royal jelly or propolis, this is something the best is like super food uh, you can offer uh, to your body and if you enter the bee house and having like detox uh, massage and uh, this warm um, warm wax uh, massage uh, uh, on your body and uh, having just anti-stress uh, treatment when you lie on the hives and feeling the vibration from the bees and uh, 
hearing the sounds, honey, uh, that is calming, calming you and having kind of uh, the sound therapy for you. This is something unique. This is something be very beneficial for uh, mental and uh, healthy uh, well-being of each person. person. Then um, you can see also the economic uh, add value to classical beekeeping. Uh, we have now uh, the Beekeeping uh, Academy of Slovenia that is promoting and giving uh, lectures, very uh, niche-oriented um, um, sessions, uh, also about apiturism, about queen breeding, or just entry level to be uh, to Slovenian way of beekeeping. So it's for everyone that is interesting uh, in getting uh, know more about uh, bees, about apitherapy, apiturism. Uh, they are promoting uh, and transforming um, uh, the knowledge. Happy nutricism. Um, it's about, uh, I think we still don't know enough about uh, the benefits of uh, honey in the, in our everyday food. So, happy uh, nutricism uh, in culinary development is something unique. It's very well developed uh, in Romania, uh, also in some other countries, but I think uh, the honey and uh, bees products need a lot more promotion uh, for including them uh, in everyday uh, culinary. Uh, of course, uh, what as we are talking about apiturism, we are talking about travel. It's important that the travels are educating and uh, inspiring and promoting uh, well-being of everyone. Uh, it is very important that this kind of product is uh, connecting uh, other um, uh, uh, other actors in tourism like agency, beekeeping schools, association. We even have, for instance, uh, beekeeping touristic um, uh, guides. Uh, there is specialization in Slovenia that uh, some of uh, guides that have this national license for guiding around Slovenia and the globe, they do also some course about beekeeping. So it doesn't mean they're beekeeper, but they have a knowledge that they can explain about the bees and they can be kind of translator uh, between um, uh, Slovenian beekeeper and, for instance, a beekeeper from Canada that want to exchange experience. This is very important that the guy knows the topic and knows what he is translating and that it has a meaning. Uh, and uh, the other thing, uh, by travels and apiturism, uh, apiturism providers, beekeepers are connecting on the world level. It's very important to share experience, not uh, only that uh, we have this Slovenian model in Slovenia, but we share it uh, with uh, other countries, other people, other beekeepers around the world. Uh, and from last year, we are uh, very uh, hard. Uh, we are doing uh, uh, a lot of promotion of having international uh, certification system for apiturism providers. Here, I would like to show you just a few insights uh, uh, to our bee houses uh, where you can enter them and have happy well-being experience. Of course, uh, these are all the big pictures, but for sure, I, uh, I'm sure it will gain interest uh, that all those pictures are so much interesting and uh, just uh, giving uh, you a hint uh, uh, that you have to visit Slovenia. For instance, on this picture, you can see female beekeeper. Yes, there are a lot of female beekeepers in Slovenia. She is also epitherapist. She has this beautiful bee house in spoil uh, in unspoiled uh, nature uh, nature uh, she gives uh, a lot of workshops uh, for young uh, and also adults preparing uh, honey picnics uh, you can see on the picture also the window uh, where uh, people can lay down and on the hives and just observe uh, unspoiled nature uh, from the bee house here is the inside of this bee house uh, where, where you can see 
uh, observation uh, hive on the left, uh, so you can lay down. Of course, there are no bees in the bee house, so no worries. Uh, nobody can uh, need to be scared for that. Bees are only outside, but all the fragrance, uh, beneficial uh, air that is coming from the hive is there, and uh, you can see on the picture also a lady giving honey massage uh, to another person lying on the hives uh, in the apiary. They're saying that this honey massage has really a lot of uh, uh, good um, impacts, uh, is very detoxic uh, and relaxing uh, and it smooths uh, the skin. Uh, you know, Cleopatra already used uh, honey and milk as uh, some uh, everyday uh, treatments for uh, uh, her skin. Yes, we, as we already explained, not only happy well-being programs as mas uh, massage or uh, relaxation in the hives, uh, we have more intensive treatments like you see on uh, the right. Uh, here is a young girl uh, lying on the chair and having direct inhalation from the hive with a mask. Uh, this is very intensive inhalation, especially uh, good uh, with some uh, asthmatic um, you know, problems or aller allergies. Uh, beekeepers are saying that uh, the patients they are having uh, are gaining uh, really good um, um, uh, improvements uh, and if they are doing it on a regular basis uh, they even uh, have uh, some feedback that uh, allergies uh, went away and uh, they're having no signs of allergy next year. Of course they are uh, suggesting to, uh, to have these treatments uh, on a regular basis so in in the season, let's say between uh, April, May and October uh, when the season of beekeeping in Slovenia is. You, here you can see another picture, picture when you can see the hives just beneath uh, where the lady lies. Um, so the vibration, uh, you, you can uh, feel the vibration, you can uh, hear the buzzing sound of the bees, uh, so the sound therapy and on the right picture you can see the thermotherapy with uh, beeswax uh, placing uh, on uh, people's back is very good with, uh, in, in the winter time and uh, with problems. Um, uh, so when we have this this kind of winter uh, disease and here you can see one of the uh, novelties in Slovenia. Uh, we even have accommodation built uh, in the style of honeycombs on the left. There are a few apartments also set in one of very beautiful unspoiled uh, uh, nature. You have uh, these apartments like they are small like a bissel but you can also see on the left having uh, the bee house uh, where you can go uh, for honey or just for uh, relaxation and um, on the right you can see uh, the last um, uh, just recently opened uh, museum and uh, accommodation. Uh, this is the place uh, where we celebrate the first World Bee Day. It's very uh, nice, uh, innovative and interactive uh, museum about um, uh, honey uh, queen breeding in uh, Slovenia. Uh, and uh, you can also sleep in the bee cells uh, as you can see here uh, on the picture. As you can see, happy tourism gives a lot of business opportunities, not only to beekeepers, but also uh, to youth, uh, to young people that are just uh, starting the business uh, career uh, or for somebody else uh, who want to work with bees, with nature. It's in, and also in tourism, uh, happy tourism is very sustainable tourism offer. Uh, it gives authentic, innovative and niche experiences. So it can be also a good chance for promoting uh, some niche products in tourism. Uh, it is a good opportunity for 
for organization uh, of uh, travels around the globe. And uh, in recent years, um, we are also having uh, some business um, leadership programs and team buildings where uh, Honeybees is playing the most important uh, role. So that was uh, in really short uh, explanation and story behind apitourism, what apitourism is. Of course, uh, it's only, these are only the words and only pictures that you have seen and uh, heard today. Uh, I'm welcoming you to see on your own, to experience it, uh, to visit Slovenia and to see what we are talking about. Api tourism with its innovative and creative approach on the one hand provides for unforgettable experiences and on the other includes a significant educational aspects as it raises people's awareness of the importance of preserving bees, preserving humanity. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for listening to me and I will be happy to welcome you in Slovenia. Hi, Tanya. Thanks so much for joining us live for our Q&A and thank you for that awesome presentation. Um, I know we have a ton of people online watching and planning their vacations in their head and also we have a number of beekeepers too. So we've got some questions for you. Um, first, uh, up here in the US in recent years, we've seen a decrease in the number of bees and pollinators in nature. Is this also the case in Slovenia? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, yes. Uh, the same is happening all around the globe. Um, may, maybe one difference is that uh, we don't have so much intensive beekeeping here in Slovenia, as I already explained. There are more hobby beekeepers. So these are small farmers having 10 to 50 hives. Uh, if you can compare it to USA, it's not really being a beekeeper, right? But it's not about uh, honey production. It's about uh, love to the bees and the production of uh, quality honey. Of course, we have also intensive uh, agriculture. So yes, it's happening. The bees are dying. Uh, but at the moment, there is not such a big uh, problem as maybe in other countries. Okay, great. Um, I know that we have a number of beekeepers who are watching here today. Are there any specific resources that you would suggest that they look at for more information about the AZ hives or the carniola bees um, that you had talked about as well that are, are or originate from Slovenia? You also mentioned beekeeping classes. Where can people find more information about that? Yes, true. So the first thing I would like to point out is Slovenian Beekeeping Association. They are really well organized and you can find a lot of information on their website. So about Slovenian way of beekeeping, so with AZ hives, uh, our transportation systems, uh, about Carnolian bee, and uh, there is another institution uh, Uh, and uh, there you can find the programs about uh, beekeeping, uh, about epitherapy, epitourism, queen breeding, uh, etc. So you have a lot of intensive courses, or you can just find information what you're looking for. And okay. I would also like to mention, I have uh, for several years, uh, there is my partner in US um, that organizes each year uh, very professional tours to Slovenia only for beekeeping and also to learn about AZ hives, uh, working with AZ hives. So maybe if somebody is interesting, uh, maybe he can contact me directly. Okay. Um, there are, there's a couple other questions. Robert on Facebook is asking, essentially, how do bees react to music? Or, you know, you talked about the vibrations of the bees and things like that. Do bees have a response um, to, like, music, do you know? Or is there anything of that sort? Uh, as far as I know, yes, they're responding. Well, I'm not uh, any scientist that I could uh, answer to that question, but for sure it's working. There are a lot of investigation and researches 
uh, done just on uh, this specific uh, topic. So on energetic level of the bees, we know even if you come to Slovenia, uh, you can visit one of our beekeepers, epitherapies. He works on this energetic level with, be with bees. Uh, so information labels, uh, he's not using um, original royal jelly, but uh, the one scientists, uh, they make, uh, how is say the information on the label and they put it on the honey so it's honey with royal jelly information and it works same as you would eat uh, royal jelly but the thing is you're not hurting bees you're not taking from uh, hives uh, any of food and uh, good things that uh, bees also need okay thank you for that um danny on facebook is asking um can you visit a beekeeper and actually order a dinner, dinner that includes bee products? And I know you had sort of talked about that, but maybe let's also zone in on how can people find um, some of the AP tourism providers that you've mentioned in your presentation? So um, all of the certified uh, tourism providers you can find on the website apitourism.si. So um, there you can find everything about apitourism, also uh, all the regions in Slovenia that are covered with beekeepers or apitourism providers. But on the other hand, uh, my company specializes for that. So if somebody wants to visit Slovenia for beekeeping, uh, either he is only... Um, uh, he has only interest uh, in the beasts or is advanced beekeeper. We can uh, adjust the tour, the visits, the length of the stay, uh, have hands-on experience or just uh, going to the beekeeper. But uh, we don't have any provider that would uh, at the moment provide dinner or lunch only made with uh, honey products. But we do uh, have uh, all those providers uh, that will give you uh, to taste not only honey and uh, some these bee products, but also uh, they will make uh, some uh, bake some goods with honey and uh, royal jelly. But as said, there is no um, full dinner or full course uh, lunch at the moment. But they do have uh, in Romania, uh, there is a lady that is uh, very professional in that and she's cooking a lot uh, only with bee products. Great. Um, you had mentioned also seeing the different beekeepers in the different regions of Slovenia. Is there a specific region that has more um, AB tourism or honeybee experiences than, than other areas? No, I wouldn't say that. Uh, Slovenia is so small, it's very green, so uh, you can find beekeeper um, all over Slovenia and uh, you don't need to choose between one or two regions because if you're coming from states, uh, we will probably come for uh, at least for a week. And for just for just to have an idea, you drive Slovenia from east to west in three hours. So. It's small country, very accessible, but of course each region um, has some specialities. So Alpine region has mountains, so it's a little bit colder. Uh, on the other hand, we have Pannonian Plain, uh, is very flat country, uh, and uh, the sea region with cars. There are some specifics also uh, in building uh, bee houses. So in the cars, where is a lot of wind, uh, they build from stone. Uh, and on the other, um, in other regions, uh, all the uh, APRs, bee houses are built from wood. Thank you. Um, so I also, uh, I know that the um, beekeeping in Slovenia was recently recognized by UNESCO. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and the significance of that on sort of the AB tourism um, work that you're doing in, and the impact of that with the beekeepers in Slovenia? Uh, yes, I already mentioned in my presentation, the huge and the most important work was done by Slovenian beekeeping organization. Really, I can say for last uh, 15 years that uh, I'm working with them, I can see um, they're doing such a progress uh, 
uh, in beekeeping, in promotion of beekeeping, in promotion of importance of the bees uh, for humankind uh, with Slovenian uh, traditional honey breakfast, with uh, World Bee Day, uh, with all initiatives in EU, um, EU uh, Parliament, so to protect uh, honey, uh, to protect our beekeepers, farmers. Uh, so I think this is a great recognition to their work and all the efforts of such a small nations as we are. Yes, there are advantages. We are small and maybe we can work uh, more closely together uh, as a nation. But on the, on the other hand, uh, sometimes you can't be hurt when you're so small. But beekeeping is really number one, I think, on the work level uh, in Slovenia. And uh, this is why UNESCO also recognized our cultural heritage with uh, our beehives, uh, apiaries. This is something unique you can find in other countries, maybe, yes, in Austria, Italy, Italy and some places that are copying or just uh, taking our model and try to adapt it in their countries. Uh, but in Slovenia, this is normal. Uh, when you drive uh, through Slovenia, you, you turn left, you turn right, and you will probably see at least one uh, uh, apiary bee house. Um, and then I guess finally, it, I think you've talked to this in a number of different ways, but if I'm planning a trip to Slovenia this year, what would be the best way for me to um, plan my itinerary around like an AP tourism a journey. So uh, firstly, I would recommend to visit Slovenia between May and October uh, for the bees, of course. Uh, otherwise, you can visit Slovenia any time of the year, but uh, uh, concerning um, the weather conditions, uh, it's the best way, uh, it's the best time to visit Slovenia between May and October when uh, the temperature are warm enough that bees can work uh, outside, otherwise bees are closed in their bee houses and you, can, you cannot see and experience uh, what I was talking and explaining you just uh, recently. Uh, for a seven, eight day tour, of course, um, the best way I would recommend is to turn to company as we are. We are professional for organizing the tour. Uh, you just named uh, what kind of accommodation are you looking for? Or do you need to rent a car or you want us to organize the whole transportation? Do you need a guide or you want to tra uh, travel and explore on your own? But I have to warn you, even though um, majority of young people, uh, they do speak English very well. Uh, well, uh, beekeepers are mainly still a little bit older and they don't speak um, English, uh, so sometimes it's really convenient or a must to have a translator or even better to have a beekeeping guide with you. So seven, eight days uh, tour can cover whole Slovenia together uh, with must-see in Slovenia, for instance, uh, Ljubljana as being the green capital, Lake Bled as this magnificent uh, island. On, you can see it uh, on uh, all the pictures of Slovenia, going to the uh, Adriatic coast, to Piran, and experience uh, the food and uh, local people there. Great, thank you. Um, is there anything that you want to add before we close out our session? Well, I'm very glad and honored uh, to have me here and that I was able to present Happy Tourism. I think uh, that sustainable tourism is very important and it will play one of the major roles uh, in our behaviors uh, towards responsible people, towards responsible travelers. Yes, it's almost a must that we travel, uh, as I explained before. So travels become affordable for almost everyone. But I think we have to be aware to take care of our planet. And uh, with happy tourism, I think this is one of the best thing what we can do for us, for bees, and for everyone. And by that travel, you're not only traveling, but you are uh, learning, you're being creative, and uh, you are getting new values uh, that you can take home, uh, share, and live by. So that would be from my side, and I will be really more than happy to welcome you, everyone, uh, in Slovenia. Thank you so much. This has been so great, and I think it's created a uh, great conversation around a really unique way to visit 
uh, Selenia. So thank you so much for your time and expertise. Uh, thank you so much and goodbye. Thanks. Thank you everybody for tuning in today. I want to give thanks to our sponsors and our partners, all of whom um, make sessions like this today possible. Uh, make you aware of some of the other events that we have coming up in our schedule this year. This year, our 11th year, we have nine days of programming. And we have a number of other events happening. Um, so tomorrow night, Monday, we have our annual movie night. We're pre pleased to present LGBT Slow 1984, which is a documentary film and a director round table, director's roundtable discussion. Admission is free. Um, please reserve your ticket in advance. The day after that is Valentine's Day, but we'll be celebrating here at Cleveland Conantabania with a cooking class with our friend Mark Toms, who will be teaching us how to cook potich, or bake rather, potichka, which are like small um, mini potitsas. The day after that on Thursday, we have our pizza pop polka um, dance lessons. And here, Folklorna Skupina Kreas, which is our um, local folk dance group here, will be helping to teach us how to polka. This is in person and tickets are $10. They're on sale right now um, and they're close to selling out. So if that's something you have considered, um, I would suggest that I uh, go ahead and secure those tickets. On Thursday, we will have our City and Wine Tasting Night with Grape Intentions. Ticket sales for those have closed, but for those of you who did sign up, you should have received your um, wine, and then we will also send you a link for the, the tasting with the sommelier. On Friday, the Slovenian Museum and Archives is hosting a an exhibit with Prashan. I mean, I'm sorry, not Prashan, Plashnik. I apologize. I, uh, it's cut off on mine. Um, and uh, this is Slovenia's greatest architect. Um, we will uh, enjoy a, an evening there together on Friday. And then on Saturday is our main festival. It starts with our 5K race. You can sign up for that online at Hermes. We have really cool hats this year um, as part of the swag for that. And then the doors at Slovenia National Home will open for the main festival at 10 o'clock. New this year is um, we will be, we've extended our footprint. We will have a uh, tent outside, Shard and Polka Band and other acts will be playing. And then inside we have the main stage and then the uh, lower hall will be turned into a children's village, which is new this year. Um, there's programming all day and all the details are on the website. Please do dress warm so that you can enjoy our outdoor programming as well. And again, uh, check out the for on these events and more. All right, and um, again, thank you to everybody for tuning in and we hope that sessions like this provide a unique opportunity to learn something new and create bonds and experiences where there might otherwise be an opportunity to do so. So thank you all and I wish you all a happy rest of your day.